In this lecture, we're going to talk about what we refer to as the HR Analytics Project Life Cycle. Now there's various life cycles that have been introduced in data science, and they're a great way to organize our thinking about how an HR analytics project or any data science project actually unfolds, and what are the constituent parts. Now, one thing to consider is really this is talking about the scientific process. We're just displaying it or conceptualizing it in a slightly different way. So if you recall, the scientific process is that First, you formulate that hypothesis or research question, then you design the study, then you collect the data, which is really at that heart of empiricism, or using data to find truth. And then we analyze the data, and then we report out the findings, and then the cycle continues as those findings update and inform the types of hypotheses and research questions that we formulate. Well, our HR analytics project life cycle captures many aspects and just reframes the scientific process in a more HR data science way. So first we start with data question formulation, move on to data acquisition, then data management, data analysis, data interpretation and storytelling, and deployment and implementation. So let's start with question formulation. What does that mean? Well, question formulation is the process of posing strategy-inspired research questions and or hypotheses. So this is so critical. Otherwise, you'd just be analyzing and collecting data or acquiring data without much forethought, and it might not be in the service of the organization's strategic objectives. In other words, it won't necessarily be lent to effectiveness and especially not efficiency. So we often use informal or formal theories of human behavior, social science, human resources, organizational behavior to inform the questions that we formulate and come up with. Now, effective question formulation uh, re results in greater data acquisition, management, and an analysis efficiency. It also results in findings that are meaningful to different stakeholders as well. So take the time to come up with good questions during this phase. Okay, the next phase or stage of the HR Analytics Project life cycle is data acquisition. And this refers to the process of collecting, retrieving, gathering, and sourcing data. And it includes the retrieval of archival data as well, whether those are employee records or some source of data that are already sitting there, perhaps sitting in our information system as well. So we use different tools in this data acquisition phase to grab those data or to collect them in the first place as well. And that includes employee surveys, maybe different rating forms too, if we're talking about performance evaluation ratings and so forth surveillance and monitoring, monitoring tools too. So if we think about wearables or different types of safety devices that are really incredible, these different sensors that can fit within different hard hats and other types of um, equipment that people wear to measure things like acceleration through accelerometer and so forth in order to determine whether or not someone may have sustained a hit or something like that or an impact on the job. And then this can be a way to determine their movement and so forth, maybe even heart rate as well to monitor their health. In addition, we can use tools like database queries to query the data from our relational database management system, perhaps, that resides in our HR information system as a whole or our enterprise resource planning platform. And then finally, we might even use a tool like data scraping or crawling websites for data as well. Now, this tool is something that we want to use judiciously as it could be used to collect data, even though it's easy to do this in many cases, data that maybe we should think about whether or not we actually should be collecting that data. Will this be a violation of employee trust and so forth? Okay, the next phase or stage in this cycle is data management. This is a huge phase. Data management is the process of wrangling, cleaning, manipulating, and applying structure in many cases to the data. Rarely do data come perfectly formed and ready to be analyzed. In fact, there's this general data science 80-20 rule that states that 80% of your time is going to be spent on data management and only 20% of the time is going to be spent on data analysis. I would actually be even a little bit more conservative with that estimate. I would say it's a 95-5 rule. 95% of your time will be spent on data management and only that remaining 5% of your time is going to be used on actually analyzing those data. It can take a long time to manage the data, especially the first time you're collecting that type of data. Fortunately, there's a number of different types of platforms. R, for instance, this statistical programming language can be used to write scripts that can then automate this in the future each time those data come in. However, the first time you're setting it up can be a very tedious and time-consuming process, but doing it right the first time can save lots of time down the road. Now, we can use different tools 
um, when it comes to data management, whether those are data man management systems themselves, our HR information systems, our ERPs, we can also use different software programs. As I mentioned, R, the statistical programming language, is really useful. Python is also quite useful as well. There's a number of different platforms that you could use. The next phase is actually data analysis. This is what we typically think of when we think of HR analytics, and so let's dive into this now. Not surprisingly, data analysis refers to the process of applying mathematical and or statistical techniques to data to identify associations, differences, changes, or classes or categories, as well as to predict the likelihood of future events or values or changes. And that latter refers to this idea of predictive analytics. Now, there are different tools that we can use in data analysis. I mentioned mathematics, but we can also use descriptive statistics, inferential statistics, machine learning, simulations, computational modeling, and so on. There's many different ways we can analyze data. The next phase, also obviously a critical phase, is data interpretation and storytelling. So now that you've analyzed the data, you need to make sense of the data, and this is what data interpretation and storytelling are all about. So you want to make sense of the data, and make sense of those findings that come from the data analysis themselves, and you want to evaluate the research questions and hypotheses that you formulated originally with respect to the data you've analyzed. You also, as far as storytelling goes, consider how are you gonna disseminate those findings to different groups of stakeholders? How are you gonna communicate with them? So what does this process require? Well, it requires human decision-making and judgment in the first place. People need to make sense in a meaningful way of the analytical findings. And this will depend on the context, background information, knowledge of HR, knowledge of legal requirements, and things like that that can help inform how we interpret these findings, as well as when and how we report those findings or tell a story about them. So we need to understand the business context, we need to understand the HR context, and we need to understand the people context too. The psychological or social scientific theory context is really critical. We also need to understand the research questions and hypotheses themselves. How do we make sure that we tested those in a rigorous way and in a way that's actually getting at the question's answer as opposed to veering off in some other pathway? We also need to make sure that we recognize the needs and knowledge of different stakeholder groups when it comes to storytelling. We might need to tell the story a little bit different depending on people's different levels of knowledge, of statistics or analytics in general, or of HR, when we're communicating these findings and interpreting them. Now, finally, when it comes to storytelling, there's three things we should really focus on. Obviously, communication is key, but we also wanna focus on connection with people and our stakeholders, as well as clarity in our message as well. Now, we finish up by talking about the phase or stage that's referred to as deployment and implementation. And it's during this phase where we engage in the process of prescribing or taking action based on the interpretations of the findings. And these are the findings that come from those data analyses. And so this requires an understanding of the stakeholder needs, an understanding of the business context as well, and then also knowledge of change management is really, really critical in this phase. So this is where you actually prescribe something or take action. It's translating those analytical findings and your interpretations and that story into something that's actionable and something that can be implemented within the organization in order to improve human resource management functioning. So to get better human capital, more talented people in the company, to train them, to develop them, to manage their performance, or to retain them, for instance, in the service of the organization's strategic objectives, as well as in the service of the organization's mission and to help achieve and maintain that competitive advantage. So again, this is referred to as the HR analytics project life cycle. There are different ways that you can conceptualize this. Other people and thought leaders in the area might have different ways of conceptualizing this life cycle. However, they all can really be distilled into this general framework, which again, is very much related to the scientific method or process. So with that, we wrap up the HR analytics project life cycle lecture. Thank you very much.